visiting the backyard of Brian Mitchell here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Brian, I love this concept. We came to see your frog pond. So tell us a little bit about it, if you would, please. Okay, well, a couple of years ago, we, um, we thought we would try the uh, having a pond. And we immediately realized we wanted a small pond mm -hmm. because they're easy to maintain and um, there's no pumps, chemicals, uh, things of that nature. If you do start having a problem, you can empty it out yeah. and start over very easily. So it's like the simplest form of a water garden, if you would think of it that way, I right? think so. And, uh, and so I put the pond in, then I turned to my wife to, well, we need plants. <laughs> and so... Uh, uh, we've got plants now and they're really doing well this year. We're really happy with them. So, so let's talk a little bit about the installation of the pond. There is a liner in there, um, but it's fairly shallow, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a small liner. Probably the water surface is about 10 foot by eight foot. Okay. The, the liner itself comes out and underneath these, these big flagstones that are around it. And then the depth six to eight inches probably when okay. it's full okay so that's uh yeah it's it's small yeah it's so we're not talking water lilies and some of those extravagant water plants it does put yeah there are some limits to yeah. what you can do but we've overcome that i think and you were really intending this to be more of a natural ecosystem right so you've got some native kind of bog plants in here well we've we've developed some good good water plants that are flourishing in this as I said, there's no there's no pumps, no chemicals, no filters, and the plants we didn't know how well they would do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so shallow. There's no ledges or shelves to put pots down into. They're simply along the edges, and there's been some sediment that has naturally formed okay. over time. Leaves and things had gotten to the bottom and decayed, and they seem to be rooting into that very nicely. The only one that the the exception is the papyrus which we've got one of those cloth pots. Oh, okay. And we filled it up with some uh, potting soil and mm -hmm. put them in and they just love it. I mean, they, they you can't overwater a papyrus is what I've been told. And, <laughs> and so that's exactly, they've got a tremendous water supply there. Plus they got all the nutrients of the, of the potting soil without that soil spilling into the pond and, and getting it uh, uh, contaminated right. with that. I love the idea of using one of those fabric pots for a water garden plant, so yeah. it's a good use. It allows that water in, but holds back the, the dirt from getting into your water as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So you do have some fish. We've got, you know, you got to create that ecosystem so we don't have a mosquito pond out here, right? That's true. So, uh, as soon as we saw mosquito larvae form, <laughs> we, uh, we, okay, we're going to get some fish. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we went to, uh, essentially went to a bait shop and <laughs> caught some goldfish. And they've done really well in there. We'll probably let them, they'll probably make it through the winter, depending, you know, on, on right. how hard the freezes and things are. And so they, they yeah, a larva doesn't stand a chance in that, uh, in that pond. They'll, uh, they'll grab that in a, in a heartbeat. But you've given them a better life than their alternate fate, they right? They were big <laughs> fish, <laughs> and now they're pet fish, so they're happy fish. Very good. And so let's talk a little bit about the plants that we have in here. So you mentioned the papyrus. It looks like we have some of the native horsetail rush as well, and your penny ward here that I know a lot of times is in people's landscapes, so that's creeping into the water garden as well. Um, tell me a little bit about, I mean, the fact that you're under a big shade tree here, that influences obviously, you're not getting a lot of flowers off of any of this stuff because they're not really flowering plants. Yeah, we don't have enough direct sunlight, yeah. it seems like, to, to get flowering plants to flower. Mm -hmm. They'll make it okay, but we haven't seen any, any flowering take place. The shade actually helps, uh, you don't want there to be an algae bloom in a pond and sunlight is a real big driver of those algae blooms. So mm -hmm. having the shade has actually been a pretty good benefit. Okay. And, uh, and of course, we'll have a lot of leaf falling soon. I was gonna ask about that. And uh, we do have a little net. And uh, when it's really intense, uh, this is a huge tree and there's gonna be a, a massive amount of, of, of leaf and other debris falling. We'll probably put a net over at least part of this Okay. And that'll help us keep it cleaned up. You don't have to keep every leaf. You want some of the leaves to, to stay in the pond and to fall to the bottom and create a food source for your plants. Mm -hmm. But you don't want it to become overwhelmed. Right. Or once again, you're feeding a potential algae bloom later on. 
So tell me a little bit. You this was a COVID project for you, I think. Is that right? How yeah. how long did it take to kind of build it? And we're two years out now, and it's starting to kind of get that that ecosystem. Yeah, happen. it's it. We were looking for things to do. We were stuck at home, <laughs> and it was something that we could go to the local hardware store and get a liner and start experimenting with it. And uh, it didn't take us very long. We actually had previous owners had put a a river rock and gravel in here, we just had to scoop it back. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of folks would have to dig. Right. We didn't have to do any digging. And uh, so really putting in the liner and getting this, it, getting it shaped was uh, probably one day. Okay. Then we decided, well, now it needs some flagstone. <laughs> and <laughs> so 4,000 pounds of flagstone <laughs> later, we've got the whole area covered, but it really has made it a much more attractive uh, pond area to have the flagstone instead of the uh, instead of the gravel and rock. Really, there's no electricity, I was going to say, but I do see a little bubbler over there. So you do have a little bit of electricity to it? Yeah, that's something we might could do even without that. We read about you want to keep a high oxygen content in your pond, once again, for algae uh, control purposes. And this is simply uh, a fish tank bubbler. Mm -hmm. And so we put that in and, uh, and with that and our, some of our other efforts, we've had, we've had very little algae. And another benefit of a small pond is you'll spot that algae really quick and you can just pluck it out. Okay, well, so one of the other things I'm curious about with having a smaller, shallower pond and having these bright, beautiful goldfish in there, do you have anything that might also want to come fishing in your pond that you've had issues with? We've, we've provided fish dinners to several raccoons. <laughs> okay. And so uh, lately they haven't been too bad. Okay. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's something we've had to do a little bit of replacement on, on our fish stock from time to time. Okay. But again, being bait fish, they're fairly cheap and... They've, they've gotten a happy life for quite a <laughs> while and uh, I don't think we've had I think we've only had one raccoon visit probably in the last couple of months. Well, it is a neat little ecosystem and even a feeding ground for some of the other wildlife in the neighborhood, huh? Well, raccoons have to eat. Yeah. So yeah, we, we take care of our raccoon friends a little bit. <laughs> well, I love this low maintenance water garden. And for anybody that maybe is looking to kind of get into that, create a different aspect into their landscape, I think this is a great alternative. Thanks for sharing it with us, Brian. You're quite welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.